I'm Daphne Loring, coordinator of the Maine Fair Trade Campaign. We're a co coalition of 48 labor, environmental, community, small business, faith-based, and social justice groups that are concerned about trade policy. Senator Snow, Collins, Allen, and Michaud all opposed CAFTA because they saw the detrimental effects of NAFTA in Maine. We've lost tens of thousands of jobs here in Maine. These agreements threaten our policies here, threaten our democracy, our sovereignty, and we have to have a changed trade policy. Peru just extends NAFTA and CAFTA into South America, and that's sending the wrong message. There are a number of problems with the Peru Free Trade Agreement. First of all, no changes have been made in terms of foreign investor rights. Foreign investors end up having more, more rights than domestic investors, end up um, being able to challenge local and state policies we've made here. Um, in terms of GATS and general agreement on trade and services, basically everything that you can't drop on your foot is a service. Uh, and they're starting to get more and more involved in energy. And so you have negotiations there around energy services. And it's not the actual oil or the gas, but it's everything else around it. And the people that have been in the driving seat in terms of those negotiations have been Halliburton and all the large oil companies, gas companies, et cetera. When Cheney had his secret energy task force, they were there. They're pushing for expansive rules within liberalizing, i.e. opening up countries' energy markets. Why? Well, so they can get in there and produce more and more, extract more and more, make more and more money around it. Um, so that's an important part. One of the things that they're pushing for is so, a so-called neutrality uh, principle. And that sounds good. From my point of view, neutrality sounds great. Well, it's kind of flipped in the world of Halliburton. It's saying you can't uh, give preference to, for example, wind or solar as compared to oil and gas. Because I think they're seeing the writing on the wall that we're moving in a direction where people are going to want to do more decentralized energy solutions, uh, clean energy solutions. And they're, of course, trying to protect their bottom lines. So they're really saying, no, you can't do that. You have to, if you're going to give a tax subsidy to wind or solar, you know, we got to get the same thing. So that's the kind of stuff that's happening in Geneva. One of the things that the WTO is doing. The other thing that the Peru Free Trade Agreement did, and where you see trade reaching into more and more areas, and that's the investment chapter. And I don't know if people are familiar with investor-to-state uh, cases. Basically, what NAFTA did, the North American Free Trade Agreement, was set up a system where each chapter in a trade agreement has a uh, avenue for how you resolve conflict. And it's state to state. So you're China, and I'm the US, and we have a conflict. Well, there's a system for that. Well, the investment chapter was different. What they did was saying foreign companies, multinational corporations, are allowed to go directly into a trade tribunal and, uh, and challenge a government measure. So it's a completely different system. It's company versus country. And of course, a company's purpose is to make money. A government's purpose is you know, to facilitate money, sure, but also how, you know, a lot of other stuff that we're supposed to be, uh, yeah, exactly, I care about. And so what you saw following NAFTA was a whole lot of different corporate lawsuits attacking zoning, attacking uh, 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 water quality, attacking a whole lot of different things, very legitimate environmental public health measures. And for a long time, environmental groups and everybody else have been saying, wait, that doesn't make any sense. If we're going to have trade, fine, but why are we setting up a separate system for corporations? What we've seen over the past few years, starting with the Central America Free Trade Agreement, was not only that they maintain those uh, rights for corporations, but they've also expanded them. So they now have language in there that specifically allows corporations to attack changes in contracts around natural resources. So that means if you're a country that, for example, says, well, you know, we're going to take a step back from, let's say, oil exploration, and you have, you know, we're going to look at wind or solar, but you have a contract, let's say, with a foreign company, all of a sudden they can come in and file a secret trade tribunal suit against you for ever much cash compensation that they think is desirable. And the panel consists of three people. One is appointed by the country, the other is appointed by the company, and the third they both agree on. So basically the company has one and a half in terms of determining who's on this panel to decide whether they should get compensation. 
and the role of the panel, and it goes back to the question of can these institutions deal with the climate crisis, the role of the panel is only to interpret the trade law. They're not there to look at the broader reasons for why you might want to do a different kind of energy policy or why you want to have a different kind of environmental policy, et cetera. I think in terms of things that, um, that people can do, obviously in the U.S. there is a slew of trade agreements that are coming up you guys are probably for all, from all over the country. I mean, start talking to your members about these trade agreements. I think <clears throat> right now is the most important thing because they are going to be heading up to the floor. Senator Snow sits on the Senate Finance Committee. Senator Snow and Collins recognized the flaws with NAFTA. They opposed CAFTA. It's important they maintain this position on these unfair trade agreements. Please contact them today and urge them to oppose the Peru Free Trade Agreement. Senator Snow's number in D.C. is 202-224-5344. Senator Collins' number in D.C. is 202-224-2523. You can find these numbers on our website. Thank you.